The 2007 election was a contest between a novice leader and a political veteran. 50-year-old Kevin Rudd had been leader for less than a year when John Howard, at age 68, called the election. There'll be an election held on the 24th of November. This country does not need new leadership. It does not need old leadership. It needs the right leadership. Love me or loathe me, the Australian people know where I stand on all the major issues of importance to their future. The greatest risk for Australia's future is for the coalition to return and nothing changes. You know, come back, King. You can do it, sir. You can do it. Labor had churned through leaders in its effort to unseat John Howard. Kim Beazley tried in 1998 and, with the help of the GST, got a swing of 4.6% and gained 18 seats. But the swing wasn't big enough. Still 13 seats short. Mr Beazley had another go in 2001, but the arrival of the MV Tampa and the September 11 attacks blunted his campaign. Simon Crean stepped into the leadership but resigned in late 2003 before contesting an election. Kim Beasley stood again but was narrowly defeated by Mark Latham, who lost to Mr Howard in October 2004. Good to see you. Okay. Okay. Good luck. Kim Beasley was back as leader in 2005 but compounded poor opinion polls with a couple of gaffes. Today our thoughts and the thoughts of many, many Australians will be with Carl Rove as he goes through the very sad process of burying his beloved wife. In December 2006, Kevin Rudd challenged. The result in numbers was 49-39. The Liberal Party had toyed with change in the lead up to the 2007 election, agonising over John Howard's refusal to go quietly. I'm the leader of the team. <coughs> and allow an orderly handover to Peter Costello in the face of sagging opinion polls. <laughs> With Labor enjoying a 10-point lead in the polls, the manoeuvring reached a crescendo during the APEC meeting in September. The Prime Minister had asked the Foreign Minister to sound out Cabinet members about his leadership. Alexander Downer came back with serious concerns from the Ministers, but no one would demand Mr Howard's resignation. It was up to him. The Prime Minister had to carry on through the APEC formalities as if all was normal. After eight days of toing and froing, buoyed by family support, Mr Howard decided to fight on for his fifth term. Are you glad this is all over, Prime Minister? And so to the campaign. Still trailing in the polls, Health Minister Tony Abbott wasn't helping. That's bullshit. Having turned up half an hour late to a debate with Labor's Nicola Roxon. And there was nothing helpful about the Reserve Bank's intervention. Another interest rate rise. I'm sorry about that and uh, I regret the additional burden. Mr Howard can no longer be trusted on interest rates. Mr Howard maintained a brave face right up to polling day. I visited about seven or eight seats in Queensland in 36 hours and uh, I've been in this game long enough to know uh, what people's reaction is like and <clears throat> I thought it was coming back. Just looking up, Prime Minister. Mr. Howard. In fact, as Mr Howard cast his vote in Benelong, in Kevin Rudd's home state of Queensland, oh, yeah. the voters were throwing the government out. Can I change my mind? <laughs> Ten seats moving to Labor, almost half the party's national gain, which included the Prime Minister's own seat. Benelong will never ever be taken for granted again. I do want to um, thank the people of Benelong uh, who've uh, done me the honour of electing me to represent them in the National Parliament for some 33 years. Despite Mr Howard's departure from the stage, Peter Costello surprised the party by turning down the leadership. The time has come for me to open a new chapter in my life. Uh, I will be looking to uh, build a career post-politics. While Kevin Rudd was crowning his political career. To unite and write a new page in our nation's history. Closing the page on almost 12 years of Howard rule. Bye-bye.